For 10 years, San Francisco's Raw Dance has been, according to the mission statement, exploring the intimate core of our identities and relationships. Here with us today, co-founders of Raw Dance, Wendy Ryan and Ryan Smith. Welcome. Thank you. Did I get that right? Was that close enough to your mission? That was, I think you hit it right on the head. I mean, that's quite a mission statement for a dance company. <laughs> The key being It sounds like a psychotherapy. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, there's, there's some of that too. <laughs> we work a lot of things out in the studio, I think one could say. I mean, you know, we're celebrating our 10th year anniversary, which yeah. means that it's been 10 years of adjusting and rearranging and thinking about our mission statement and thinking about why we choose to do work and why we choose to do work now and here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do think identifying and examining our identities, and, um, and that does range in identity politics from sexuality to intimacy and relationships to everything from kind of our history and larger politics. Um, we made a, a mission statement that kind of allows us to keep on keeping ourselves intellectually stimulated, which is how we've survived for 10 years. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's what mission statements are about. They're supposed to be flexible and allow you to grow into them as an organization evolves. Definitely. How, how have you evolved, not as a dancer, but specifically as an organization over 10 years? That is a, a challenging one, um, but uh, you know we've actually been really lucky to have a couple of our dancers for the entire ten years. Mm -hmm. So we feel very, very lucky in that we've really had a core to work with. Um, as an organization, we just keep getting bigger, um, and that's not something we necessarily anticipated when we started out. Again, we've been we've been super lucky. Um, but we've been able to connect to a ton of other dance artists in the city. We started a series called the Concept Series back in 2007, and we've hosted 64, I think the number is, mm -hmm. other guest companies since then. So just networking to that large of the, uh, the community has been um, pretty instrumental in carving out our own space, who we are, who we're not. Um, and then creating opportunities for everybody around us. And when we first started, we just wanted to make work. We didn't think about it. We just were like, we want some dancers. You, you, were, you were dancers. Yeah, was, we wanted to present beginning. some work. I mean, you we both were dancers. It started, and uh, like so many small dance companies, you wanted to explore your unique vision, I yeah. assume. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it became a company, and it, it, there's this different formality, and we continue to show work and, and present and do more and more. And I think one of the things that we realized as we started to present more in the city is that it was really important for us to provide access to dance. Um, and to like free public dance art, and that's something that mm -hmm. is another changing part of our mission. It wasn't there necessarily at the beginning, but as we started to, to grow as a company, we realized that it was important for us to, to bring work directly into the public. It's always a challenge in the dance field about bringing audiences to the work. Mm -hmm. We're like, screw that. Let's mm -hmm. just bring the work to the audiences. Mm -hmm. Basically, we went to dance shows and we started seeing everybody, all the same faces in the audience for every dance show, which is great. There's a core audience. It's mm -hmm. fabulous. We wanted to see the but rest of the city. they're not going to live forever. Exactly. That's, that's very true. <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. So we just started to push dance into the middle of crazy venues in the city. Um, and a lot of those people have actually followed us back into the audience. We lure them in by performing yeah, yeah. in front of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember Ten years ago, uh, I believe it was during Bay Area National or National Dance Week. The name has evolved. Yeah. It's evolved. It's <laughs> yes. a lot of dancers. It's in the Bay, and there was dancing done, as I recall, by the cable car turnaround. Mm -hmm. There was some dancing on the F Market and all kinds of stuff. And I remember seeing a bunch of the photos of the different companies, and I just remember that the raw dance photos were really like the sexiest photos of the bunch. Yes. You know, I'm so glad that has stayed I know, with you. and some people said, because, I mean, you know, I've worked with, I mean, San Francisco is, I think, and you tell me if you think I'm wrong, quote, unquote, America's second city of dance, as far as the number of dance companies here, which is incredible, it given is. that New York is number one, and it's like 10 times yeah. bigger. Yes. But there are a lot of sexy dancers around, and I saw those photos, it's like, wow, I mean, it's, Score. I don't know, it's kind of like Fosse. <laughs> I mean, it, was that part of the idea? I mean, sex sells. Uh, sex sells. I think we realized pretty well, early on that, that that was a good way to make, to, to get noticed as people that nobody had ever seen before. And, you know, yeah. a lot of our work does explore sexuality and sex. We've had works on sexology, works on pornography. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of it also stems from we both love fashion and fashion photography and yeah. fashion imagery. So Very we kind of blend in those of in our photography. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, the, the moment to try the things that we can't actually do live, but right. you can do those in a photo. And it, although, <laughs> strangely enough, our last show, which just happened a couple of weekends ago at Z-Space, I am fully covered from head to toe it's in true. both of the pieces. We it is are. a raw dance first, there's no booty shorts <laughs> on stage. Yeah, as I recall, uh, I mean, I think you were in I one of those sexy... Skirt. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little My costumes are usually about the size of my fist. I yeah, I mean, Cher, Cher has bigger costumes than you. <laughs> yes, it's she true. does. We could probably share our costumes, I actually. actually think, yeah, Bob Mackie and...
it may be like a correspondence going on here. <laughs> oh, I kind of like that. <laughs> well, we have yet to figure out the costumes. We actually have a show coming up at Yerba Buena Gardens talking about free and accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being hosted by the Yerba Buena Gardens Festival. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be on a stage right in front of the Memorial Waterfall. Mm -hmm, the Martin um, Luther King Memorial. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But we haven't figured out those costumes yet. So <laughs> we've, we've got a couple of weeks to determine well, there's a lot who's of water. wearing there booty shorts. Some, there could be some wet t-shirts going on We could have some fun with this. Although there is like a danger. This. Outdoor shows, the flooring, the Marley flooring for dance gets very hot. So there it's might be true. some singed skin if there's not some coverage. <laughs> These are the things people don't know about you when you run a dance company. Plan. Well, I mean, it's dangerous you know, territory. You know, re reading some of the uh, the critiques of your work, I, the, the words that jumped out in that, uh, that fact sheet, you know, edgy, sexy, inventive. Um, is it equal parts, all three? I mean, to you, which is... <sighs> You know, I don't is think it more we, edgy? Is it more inventive? Is it more sexy? We oh. never go out trying to do any of the three. I'll be honest. We don't. We don't start a work saying we've like, got to make this edgy. We've got to make this sexy. I think there's something inherent to our aesthetic and what we like and what we like to see and put on a stage that does kind of play with all three. Probably somewhat equal, but depending mm -hmm. on each work, it's a little different. But you know, for us, really, it's it's about the research process and the work and playing in the studio and playing with the dancers and then seeing what evolves out of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't help it if our work is edgy and sexy and, and raw and raw. And yeah, we exactly. Go for that. We uh, want we want it to be memorable. We want people yeah. to feel something. So so hopefully that will make them yeah, yeah. come away with something. <laughs> now, how did the two of you get together and start choreographing, or I should say, company building? <laughs> Valid point. Both, both uh, of those things. We actually met in college. We both um, went to Brown University and met overlapped for only one year, but then Wendy happened to stay in Providence, and we continued to dance with each other. So we were paired up by a guest choreographer there at the time, um, back in 1998. Mm -hmm. So we were dance partners throughout Long college, worked time. with a number of different choreographers, and then stayed dancing together, and eventually moved to the Bay Area in 2003 and decided to kind of pursue this, to pursue the company model and see what we could do. And within it. a year, start a company. We did. Yeah, I mean, not? was your medication off? I mean, come on. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, San Francisco is expensive now. <laughs> yeah. But come on, let's be real. San Francisco was expensive in 2003, too. It, well, it, although coming from New York, it felt a little bit less expensive. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> we, we were also lured moved into a here. false sense of security. We moved here without jobs, without... Oh, yeah, we I had about anyone. $700 in my bank account. <laughs> we kind of were just like, fine, Mom, Dad, can you pay for my first month's rent and we'll just no. sign a lease? You I know? was coming yeah. out of a breakup. It was, it was a transitional moment. <laughs> there wasn't much thinking between 2003 and 2004, but, you know, we're here. 2014, right. and we've, we're thriving as a company, so yeah. it's great. Now, as I said, San Francisco, some people call the second city of dance. You know, there's a lot of wonderful dance done mm -hmm. here. Some of it in garages, some in alleys, some in, I said, Muni, different places. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of inventiveness to the Bay Area dance scene. But, you know, there's been some writing lately in the last few years that San Francisco had lost its edge, that it wasn't quite as inventive mm -hmm. as it was. You think that's true? And if so, why? No, it's an interesting question. It I, is. It's changing. I think its edge is changing. Um, I think there's kind of a, you know, a lot of the people who were um, edgy once and kind of the starting new trends are starting to kind of break away from certain forms mm -hmm. are, you know, continuing to make work that interests them. And a lot of it has stuff that they probably, based on things they did 10 or 15 years ago, it's still the work that really interests them and really matters to a lot of people. Um, but I think that everyone's always looking for something new and something fresh and something mm -hmm. other, and so there's just that kind of pressure to make that happen. Our take, though, is that really, I mean, everything's been done. No matter what you do, you're really not being as inventive as you think mm -hmm. you are. I hate to tell you this, other artists, really, like, it's very, very rare to find someone who is completely making something brand new and from scratch. We'd rather go in and understand that certain things work. Certain things have been done. We can learn from them. We can make them better. We can improve mm -hmm. on them. We can use them. We can we, put our spin on them. We can put our spin on them. We really appreciate and value the craft of choreography. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that's being lost within contemporary dance these days. There are fewer and fewer people who really kind of look at things from a craft aesthetic standpoint. And we kind of are going back towards that. It's like, how can we think about the craft of dance um, bodies on stage and kind of play with that aspect of it in addition to the cellular level of movement? Right. Now, you know, to go back to your mission statement, you know, exploring mm -hmm. the intimacy of human relationships. Yep. I know that's a paraphrase, but the word that sticks up out for me is intimacy. Yep. I mean, dance is, in one sense, dance is the most intimate of art forms. It's about bodies and sweat mm -hmm. and, you know, all that stuff. And then, you know, sometimes you look at, um, you know, uh, the Nutcracker, mm -hmm. and that's like, that's really, you know, that's literally sugar plum it fairies. It feel very intimate it when doesn't you look at feel the very intimate. Yes. So of all the pieces you've done over 10 years, what to you, which piece or which series of pieces were the most mm -hmm. intimate and why? And did you ever explore anything on dance that made you think, maybe I shouldn't have gone there? <laughs> um, that probably is a yes. 
I don't know if we want to admit to that <laughs> yeah. uh, in public, but that yeah. is probably a yes. For me, there's two two sides to that. One, uh, just from the inside perspective, uh, there's a what we call our signature duet, just because we've performed right. it around the country, in parts of Asia. We've really just performed it for the last many years. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's a duet that really did stem from uh, 20 days, I think a 20 day residency or something like that at ODC where we were pretty much locked in a room together and mm -hmm. had to come out with something. Um, and then we've performed it so much and it, it, it really did stem from our codependent relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we let all of that come out in the piece and I think it's far more violent than we ever actually are with each other. Mm -hmm. um, but because we've lived in it for so long, it it is intimate. I mean, we know it inside out. We know each other inside out. From and so when you it. do something like that, a signature piece, because, you know, I've spoken to actors who have the same thing. There's one role or one monologue they're known for. Or, you know, like, I'm sure Bette Midler gets tired of singing The Wind Under My Wing. But, you know, how <laughs> do you... Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, talks about the residuals. Maybe not. But, you know, how do you make that fresh? Mm -hmm. How do you make a piece which is ultimately about the intimacy of your relationship intimate every time? One thing that's amazing about that duet and one thing that we're really lucky about in general is that we've danced together for 16 years. So like our level of intimacy is, is rare. Mm -hmm. um, it also means that we can be really in the moment on stage in a different way. And I would say that's one thing that we're always changing little bits. We're always mm -hmm. playing mm -hmm. with something new, a little bit yeah. different. It's never identical. It's There's something about it that really is so of the moment that it... It, it definitely feels specific and unique every time. Mm -hmm. I say that now. Another hundred performances, and <laughs> yeah. we might get tired of it. Right. I think the audience um, plays into that too. I mean, it depending does. on who you're doing it in front of, their reaction really feeds back into right. the work. So it always feels a little bit different. But was there anything that you ever thought I shouldn't have explored that? I mean, it sounds like this is an intimate piece, but yes. it, you don't feel like you should have explored that. Is there anything that you explored? And I'm not talking about physically, like oh, no. that was right. that was hard to do. But I don't know if maybe, maybe we were ready to do that or the audience stage. were. Yeah. We did, I mean, we did a piece in 2006 that was um, kind of inter the intersection of art and pornography. We performed yes. it at the Belcher Street Studios mm -hmm. um, in its final incarnation, taking place over in two rooms. And I would say, I don't think we weren't ready to explore it and perform it at that point in time, but I really, it's one of those works that I wish we were looking at it with our perspective now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we've matured as individuals and as artists and as the company has matured, I'd be really curious to see what our take would be. Mm -hmm. um, Why did know, people put the little black bars over you or something? Or? We no, about we it. did talk about it just uh -huh. as an idea, actually. <laughs> um, and you know, there was one that at the end of the piece, I was dancing around naked and the dancers were taking Polaroids of me while doing yeah. so. And you know, it definitely was a very exposed piece. And I think we uh -huh. probably would do it with a, just again, with a different level of craft that and it's not to say the first work wasn't strong, but I think it could have been, it could be stronger now mm -hmm. with our better sense and appreciation of craft and choreography, just with, again, with maturity. Mm -hmm. I think we could do more with it. Right. Now, this is your 10th anniversary year. It is. What do you got planned? I mean, that's a, that's a biggie. It is. It, it does. It actually feels like a real milestone. People always say these things, but this, this one does have that feeling to it. Um, we actually started our, our season um, about a month ago or so. Um, we had a, a major season at Z-Space, um, for our first time presenting in that space. We presented two new works. Including um, one based, um, called Turing's Apple, it's based on the life of Alan Turing, mm -hmm. with, uh, it's our first cross-country collaboration with the composer Richard Einhorn based in New York. Wow. Um, so that just happened at Z-Space, and then, um, shortly after that, we actually did a performance at, as part of the Bay Area Now Festival at your Buena Center for the Arts. And then the next thing that we have is this <laughs> September uh, 5th, 7 p.m., September 6th, 8, uh, 1 p.m. I don't even know my own schedule. <laughs> I need a calendar. It's been a busy year, 10th anniversary. Um, we're performing rep season, a free, as Wendy mentioned, That's a free rep Buena season Gardens. at the Buena Gardens. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you for being with us, and it sounds like you're going to stay edgy and inventive and sexy for the next 10 years. We're trying. You think you'll be dancing together 10 years from now? Ask us I'm in like, 10 years. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me check my back. The dance might look a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to try. Great. We'll see. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Thanks for so having us. We've been speaking with Ryan Smith and Wendy Ryan of Raw Dance celebrating their 10th anniversary. Next up, we're going to speak with Ken Henderson about one of the Bay Area's most beloved annual events, an event which raises a lot of money for AIDS and HIV charities. Help is on the way. We'll be right back.